Hey folks, this is Ben Gessel. How's it going? We'll try to have some more um, videos soon. Um, I have some thoughts about uh, the Russia-Ukraine um, situation, by the way, today. And incidentally, I've, I'm playing this little uh, survival game that was made in Russia. And uh, it kind of portrays the Americans as the enemies in a not direct way, but in kind of a vague way. Um, and I think it, it, the Americans are enemies, especially because of when this game takes place. This game takes place in the in the 80s during Cold War. But it's interesting to see as I play this game. It's interesting to see the Russian side, and you know, it's it's a good thing for me to do that. You know. It's a fun game. I think it's, I can't remember what it's called offhand, but, um, but, and of course I, you know, I know personally no Russians here and, you know, it's not, nothing's going to change. Um, no, no international thing or no, con no national conflict will change how I feel personally about anybody. It's, uh, you know, Russian, of course, but of course the, the crazy thing is, is that this if things get crazy, um, some people might treat Russians here rather poorly. That's to be expected, but I'm not. I'm not wanting that at all because, because you know, most people treat Slavs in in this case, especially Russians, decently. I would think um, majority of people, you know, and some people treat Russians very well and love them as Americans. Um, we've often praised Putin in the past for being a real leader, or at least a strong leader. Um, there may be hints of a, in that sentiment regarding, uh, oh, everything from um, people who are white, who are kind of um, seeing when Trump and Putin were both presidents, kind of the, well, you know what I'm talking about, kind of a um, united, <laughs> united white kind of um, brotherhood or alliance. <laughs> that that's it's, eh, I don't like it to be racial in a way, but but then but then of course a lot of people were uh, like Putin because. Um, because people wanted good things for Russians, and you know the standard of living was to go up with Russia, with Putin, and um, Putin also, you know, was a leader that people could actually say, oh, he's actual, you know, he's he's a strong again, he's a strong leader, um, and he seemed to have conservative values uh, in a way of in a certain matter of speaking. When I say conservative, I guess I mean culturally conservative, you know, but. Anyway, so, um, and Putin decided he's not going back to Stalinistic plans, but, but, yeah. so, the, but of course, that doesn't mean that he doesn't, it's, it's different to have Stalinist, Stalinist uh, leanings, that's different than wanting expa something expansionist for Russia. And it's, it's different, you know, Stalin's communism was very totalitarian, and it, and Khrushchev, somewhat that way, same same way too. And Yeltsin was the one that started it all, of course. Uh, I'm sorry, not Yeltsin. I meant <laughs> Lenin. Lenin was the one that started it all. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeltsin. Yeltsin. And there's another guy, Medev, Medvedev or something. Anyway, Stalin. We know Stalin was the worst worst of the group. And then of course Gorbachev was probably the best of the group. Um, probably at least the best in terms of how much I like the different premieres of Russia since 1917 or so. So, um, but then of course Yeltsin and, and Putin are post Soviet Russia. There maybe might have been one other person. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've played the video game. I know personally the Russians, nothing that's, that's going to happen is going to change how I feel about them. I know that. They might, might encounter some bad experiences with 
people. Um, if something, if things get really bad, and I'm hoping that any persecution in the United States is very minor or doesn't happen at all. Um, but, and, um, so what do I think is good? What, what do I think is going to happen? First off, why is Russia doing what it's doing? Well, you know, I was watching in some videos on YouTube and I kind of knew this already. Um, strictly speaking, as far as I understand the old USSR, uh, there was, of course, the different states of, Ru of uh, USSR were, of course, Russia, the main one. And you also had, of course, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine, Armenia, uh, Georgia, Azerbaijan, uh, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan, all the stands back there. And, of course, you always had... Um, they didn't have their own state, but you have areas like Chechnya and, and other stuff like that too, here and there. Is it Serbia or something? There's some place right next to Moldova that was never really a nation, but they declared it's all the nation, but I saw Teensy that, whatever. Um, so, um, but that was the old USSR. And of, of all those states, the ones that are most distinctly uh, uh, culturally close to Russia, uh, you know, culturally, linguistically, historically, are Ukraine and Belarus. Absolutely. Ukraine and Belarus are very close to Russia. And so, this is, this other, you know, Ukraine has resources. Belarus does not. The main reason why Russia wants to take Ukraine there's other reasons too, there's many reasons, but one of them is resources, two is they're very culturally similar. Three, Russia wants more seaports in the Black Sea, and also four, when Russia wants the oil and, and other natural gas and other resources Ukraine has. Or five, you know, Ukraine has farmland, um, food, a lot of food. Six, <laughs> just greater population, more power again for Russia to be a superpower to be more on par with China and the United States. And Ukraine is huge. It's like, it's like the, it's almost like the, uh, um, industrial belt of the Great Lakes over to the Northeast of the United States. It's just, it's got a lot of very productive areas, um, industrially and agriculturally. And so, yeah, I mean, Russia wants it and the Ukrainians don't, want anything to do with Russia taking them over and Putin. If there's any Ukrainians that are favorable toward Russia, they're definitely pretty much in the East. Um, so is, you know, I would think that um, if Ukraine lost some more land to Russia um, and if we could avoid a world war, and Ukraine just lost a little sliver of the East. Um, that might be not the best case scenario, but that would be a far better scenario than the whole nation uh, being vulnerable and, and being lost to Russia or a war breaking, a world war. Because we're, ta we're talking, there's no way that this could be a localized war. This is going to be a world war. We're talking about Russia for crying out loud here. Russia and Ukraine. NATO will come to Ukraine's aid. United States, it's question is at what point and what form. Russia stands a very good chance of winning because uh, they have such a powerful military. Uh, what I mean is they have a very strong chance of gaining a lot of ground at first. It's just a question of how much resources NATO and the United States are willing to put in to this. But if if NATO, if Europe, if Europe and the United States put in a whole bunch of, I mean, they really, it's actually a war then, yeah, we could crush Russia. But we also have to... You see, the funny thing is, yes, there's, there's India and China and South Korea and North Korea and Japan that start to get involved, as well as... Well, Europe is extremely powerful, as it is. Plus, you have all the Middle Eastern powers. I mean, there's a lot of nations. And that's why Russia, Russia is so connected. It's so powerful. It has so many connections um, in the world. 
And so if there's a, a war, oh man, it's like, there's it, a very, very good chance that it's going to turn into a world war if we're actually talking about large scale uh, troops involved in things. I'm not saying it's going to turn into anything nuclear, but if for some reason Putin feels like the heartland of Russia and Moscow is going to be uh, at stake, I think at that point he'll launch some nukes and then we will too. And then that's, that's the worst case scenario. <laughs> okay. And then China getting involved and the whole world just boom, you know, but um, so China, India, everyone might be thinking about, by the way, what's India going to do? Well, India likes Russia. They have an alliance, but India is not going to get involved because India is also, I think, kind of friends with America. And the only nation that India, the only two nations that India um, really has a beef with are China and Pakistan still. And so if Russia is about to go down in the flames, India might, might have to make a hard decision. Do I support Russia? I mean, if it, if it really comes to Russia being more vulnerable in a more, more vulnerable position, India is going to have to either pick sides or just remain firmly neutral. Um, but I suspect that India is not going to get involved. And China, though, may use this as a reason to go to war. And if China gets involved, it's World War. It is, it is, it is on. It is on. It's World War Three. If by some miracle China does not get involved, then we can avoid World War Three at least for now. But this is going to get. This is this is huge, folks. This is big. It's, it's going to be huge uh, once we actually have fighting. At the point that we start having um, battles between Ukrainian soldiers and Russian soldiers, and then when NATO starts to get involved, oh, and then things start toppling over, right? One thing leads to another. It's time to get your food storage in order. It's time to, you know, make your emergency preparations. It's time to figure out things. It may be that this is not going to be a big thing still, but I suspect this will be a bigger deal um, than taking the, the, when Russia took over Crimea or whatever. This is now. I, I'm I'm I should say my feelings are ninety nine percent in favor of the Ukrainians in this case and in, in, in America. Maybe about that point. I still, there's a still a side of me. I, I, I do understand a little bit why why, why Putin wants this uh, conflict or why, why, why Putin wants Ukraine. If Ukraine and Belarus were to go peaceably into the Russian, you know, into Russia without any con conflict, without any people dying, and if and if this was uh, something that the Ukrainians wanted, I think that would be fine. I have, I have no problem with seeing a stronger Russia, especially if we're talking about things like the Illuminati in the West being evil. And this is one of the things that Putin probably is aware of that he knows people believe in the One World Order that ex exists, and he's probably wanting to use that. A uh, whole train of thought to undermine American patriotism, that sort of thing. And the funny thing about all that is, is that it's not the same people in the United States that are involved with both groups. If someone is a member of the, of the Illuminati, they're not truly patriotic. And you have patriots that don't suspect anything's happening with the Illuminati. Um, but they're, they're just two. They're two different groups. They're the people that would fight and die to preserve the liberties of the, that we have in the United States, the, the way of life we have, and that are good people. And then you have other people that would fight and die, well, actually, not, they're not, not personally, but they would want people to fight and die to further their own um, domination of the world. And that's the difference. And, and uh, it's, it's either in one camp or the other in, in the United States and in the developed world and Europe and stuff, so Israel and stuff. So... But anyway, um, 
But yeah, and Putin's using that. That whole train of thought of uh, America equals this evil thing, whether it's the Illuminati or whether it's we killed all the American Indians, you know, or we have an evil history to we're not the most angelic people in the world or something like that. I mean, you look at all the things that the U.S. government has done that's wrong. And he'll, you know, they'll never go, you know, he'll, he'll never talk about how the pe- American people um, are indeed good people. Because he, what he'll want to do is make us look like the bad guy. But that's just a po- political thing, you know. Of course, I can see why he'd be taking, talking all that stuff. But. And it's what politicians do, isn't it? We hate it. We, we hate it because it's, you know, it's kind of like half-truths. But they're doing, you know why they're doing it, right? From up patriots, you know, fight for us, fight for us. It's just so, so evil. It's just, well, ultimately it's very evil, but it's like he's kind of trying to do his, whatever he's wanting, wanting to do in this evil world of world politics, national politics, trying to be a powerful leader. And there's a lot of gray. But the one thing that's always wrong, it's war is always wrong at some level because you don't want people dying, obviously. I mean, there are times when, you know, it's time to go to war, but most modern wars are not legitimate, or they're not, uh, they're unjustified, they're, in my opinion. Um, anyway, so, and Putin also is worried about um, people taking, someone taking over Russia, different powers, because if you get NATO, especially, that's getting really close to Moscow, and they want to, you know, they're getting within more missile range, even, you know, weaker missiles, but, you know, if you have Belarus, for instance, I mean, wow, between Finland, the Baltic states, and Belarus, and Ukraine, if they're all NATO, or if they're all really sympathetic to the United States, and we we move in a ton of troops, and ton of missiles, and ton of whatever, artillery, holy cow, man, (laughs) and like, yeah, Russia would be sweating bullets, like, what are you doing? So, you know, and that's the part of me that's just like, what are we doing? Uh, do we want to invade Russia? Or do we want to just take over? We want to oust Putin and put in a president that we think is going to be um, more friendly to America? And then there's also Illuminati trains of thought where, you know, is the CIA is in this, and is the CIA the good guys, and now they can put in someone that really is a, a good person. Or is it going to turn into, you know, all, all the stories you hear about the Middle East and Iraq and stuff and Afghanistan is it can be something where it's a failed um, state that we try to or something like that. I don't know, but Russia's not in that whole arena even because Russia is so powerful. That, you know, if we were to try to mess with them that way, it's it's against world war for sure. Um, I have a lot of thoughts here, folks. A lot of thoughts. A lot of thoughts. Um, but I think right now this is. The China versus Taiwan thing is even taking a backseat to the Russia versus Ukraine thing. And um, I guess the thing to do, along with keeping an eye on what's happening, is to treat Russians with kindness, no matter what happens, of course, to to, um, have a game plan for if things get really crazy, at least where you guys live. Regarding what happened, you know, all the effects, you know, what would happen if this turns into a war, an actual war, and it, and it spreads out beyond just Eastern Europe. Um, that's the second thing is, and that's evolving the food storage and the, you know, fuel and everything. The third thing I think is to remember what it is that you be- truly believe in and, and try not to have propaganda sweep you one way or another. And, um, a lot of people are swayed by national feelings. The thing is, is that there are some, there's some things that trump na- even national feelings. And that is, uh, it should be that if, if we're all humans, human beings, and we're all trying to live good lives and find happiness, that we should try to be united as good as people, especially as more righteous people, or as people trying to be righteous or good. Um, and that should trump any kind of national feelings where you would want to kill somebody simply for being a different country or a different nationality. And it's hard to do that when you've had bad experiences with 
people from a certain country, the more intense those experiences are. I've, I've never had any negative experiences about certain nations or regarding certain nations in my life. If I did, I might feel somewhat differently, but I haven't. So these are some of my thoughts about Russia versus Ukraine. And um, is there a solution? Well, the, the solution may have to be, or maybe um, it's it's like I don't think Putin's gonna back down from wanting a slice of Ukraine. Um, but I don't think we should give Ukraine to to Russia. I I think what has to happen is the Ukrainians have to, you know, but they have to, the majority of Ukrainians, or like three fourths or whatever, the vast majority has to say, okay, we want to be a part of Russia. Let's become let's become part of Russia. Unless that happens, no, I don't I don't think Russia has any business in Ukraine. And I think, what are we going to give Russia in return for um, Russia just leaving well enough alone? Well, honestly, I don't think we should give them anything. But we should do more business with Russia. We should still do a lot more trade with Russia. We should not have any tariffs. We should be very have very open, you know, yeah, just, you know, not have Russia be the odd man out. That's what we should do for Russia. But we shouldn't give them anything. We, shouldn't, we certainly shouldn't give them any land. Again, unless the Ukrainians vast majority of them want to become part of Russia and let them peacefully peacefully become part of Russia I think that's what that's my main thought there that's my main but I don't think Putin's going to go for that I really don't I think Putin's had it with Russia being in third place in a way compared to China and the United States now Russia is still debatably in second place militarily I think but so the, Russia's military might be superior to China's still but um, economically it might be third place or even below that. I think I don't know where the GDP is. I think Russia's GDP is not quite as high as certain other nations, but I guess in terms of just overall power, both economically and militarily, Russia's maybe not a third compared to China. So I don't think Russia wants to be, you know, second fiddle to China in the, the uh, less or the non-Western uh, world. We used to call it the second world. Yeah. I think Russia wants to be number one. And so I think this is why it's, this is happening. And uh, yeah. Anyway, you guys leave me thoughts and comments below. Catch you guys later. Take care. Bye.